Hi, we are bored of seeing the same face for three episodes of EVs that inspire. Well, that's why I'm here. Wait, wait. Did you just say bored? I mean, like, I'm standing right here. I only want me to say it's true, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, it's not true. Please just edit out that line. Well, jokes apart, I am truly, truly glad that you're a part of the series with me now, Gargi, because... I'm happy to be here. Well, it's great because I know that all things that are good for the environment, that's pretty much been your journalistic pursuit for years. So, what better topic than EVs, cars that are actually good for the planet? Well, thank you for having me and today on this episode, we're diving deep into the heart of what makes an EV tick, or rather charge, the battery. There are already three episodes out there for you in this series and Siddharth has taken you through the history of EVs, the platforms they're based on and even how they're inspiring the designs of future vehicles. Absolutely. So now, let's talk batteries. From sluggish starts to lightning fast charges, EV batteries have come a long, long way. So that, did you know that electric cars were actually quite popular before the internal combustion engine actually took over? Yeah, well, we're going back to the late 1800s, early 1900s. Electric cars were seen as actually the sophisticated choice. No noisy engines, no hand cranking to start, and certainly no need to visit smelly gas stations. The downside, of course, these batteries were, let's just say, a bit of a lead weight. Quite literally, isn't it? Our journey now begins then with the lead-acid battery, invented by Gaston Planté in 1859. These were workhorses, reliable for early electric carriages. You even got to see them on some New York City taxis. But imagine trying to power your modern SUV with them. A 1996 GM EV1 actually started with lead-acid, its range optimistic at best, and safety, well, they contain corrosive acid and were prone to overheating if pushed too hard. Think of it as your phone battery, but if it weighed 500 kilograms and occasionally got a little too toasty to touch. Yes, remember when phone batteries used to do that? Well, the cost of course in this case was also the really significant hurdle. Lead is plentiful, but getting enough power for like a decent range, it just meant a lot of lead, making that vehicle really expensive and ridiculously heavy. Well, fast forward to the 1990s and we see the rise of the nickel metal hydride or NIMH battery. Remember the original Toyota Prius or the Kia Optima and Nero Hybrid? Those are the cars where these shone. NIMH offered obviously better energy density and a longer lifespan than lead acid. This was at the time a definite breakthrough. Now it gave cars more range, made them a lot lighter, well, a bit lighter I should say. Safety also improved because they didn't contain that liquid acid. But they still had their quirks. They suffered from something called memory effect, where if you didn't fully discharge them before recharging, they'd remember the shallower charge and act like that was their new full capacity. It's almost like me remembering just the first three pages of a book. Yes, and it's also reminding me of our old phones again. But while better, the cost was still relatively high for the kind of energy that they provided. That meant it limited their widespread adoption in like pure EVs. Now, we needed something just more, more energetic. And enter the rock star of modern battery technology, lithium ion. Commercialized in the early 1990s, but it was really Tesla's roadster in 2008 that lit the fuse for its widespread adoption in EVs. You know, that roadster came to India for a little brief visit and I got a chance to drive it then, but let me not go on about that. Lithium ion batteries then were a game changer. Why? Incredible energy density. They could store far more energy in a much smaller, lighter package. Now this meant much longer driving ranges, much better acceleration, and cars that just felt so much more like cars, like their petrol counterparts. So I have to say that the first time I got to drive a whole bunch of these, it was like a revelation. And they don't suffer from the memory effect like NIMH. You can charge them whenever you want, top them up and they'll be happy little power packs. Yes, so at this point, it makes sense to talk about the big three things that really matter here. Safety, cost, and of course, environmental impact. Let's start with safety. Now, early lithium ion batteries, they also had a reputation for, let's call them thermal events. 
You mean they occasionally burst into glorious fiery songs? <laughs> yes, precisely. This was a major concern. But incredible breakthroughs in battery management systems or BMS, that's what's dramatically improved the safety. Now, these systems are like the brains of the battery pack, constantly monitoring every single cell's temperature, voltage, and also the current that's passing through them to prevent overheating or overcharging. So think of it like a super smart, very efficient bodyguard for your battery. So you're saying all these new batteries are way safer? Way safer, of course. Now, there's also a certification that goes with that. Car makers are doing extensive tests to ensure that in any eventuality, the battery pack can also endure like a massive crash. None of this is taken lightly. But you know what? There are other systems too that have come into play and expanded the usage of the battery pack. Yes. In fact, we've seen that happening with cars that have also started to offer something called V2L charging. Right. The vehicle to load. Absolutely. I was blown away by it. I mean, you can go camping, set up a projector, a coffee machine or even a mini fridge using this. It's so useful, very intelligent tech, and now we see a lot more cars getting it. And now you also have something called V2V, which is vehicle to vehicle charging. But you know what? Even though this is kind of becoming a customer demand, it's still uh, a technology that comes at a cost. So it's still kind of niche. Ah, the cost. Early on, EV batteries were eye-wateringly expensive, a big chunk of the car's price tag. Now it's also the scaling up of production, continuous research. There's so much innovation in the battery chemistry itself. Overall cost of lithium-ion battery packs has come down drastically. We're talking like 80% lower than 10 years ago. This makes EVs more affordable, a whole lot more accessible. It's truly a testament to mass production and technological refinement. Now this brings us to the environmental impact, something very close to my heart. Now critics often point to the mining of materials like lithium, cobalt and nickel as a negative. And yes, mining always has an impact. Now, mineral sourcing for EV batteries includes mining for nickel, cobalt, lithium, along with other natural minerals such as graphite, tin, and tantalum. Well, that's true, but it's crucial to look at the overall life cycle. Lots of studies are now consistently showing that over its lifetime, an EV, even accounting for the battery production and the battery element of the car, just has a significantly lower carbon footprint than a comparable petrol car. And this is especially true, of course, when you're talking also about charging the car using renewable energy. Plus, there's a push for more sustainable and ethical sourcing of these materials, a very, you know, welcome step. Companies are investing in better mining practices and crucially, recycling is becoming a massive focus. Manufacturers have already gotten into conflict-free mineral sourcing and EV battery recycling which is the best step in the most uh, sustainable direction. Exactly. Now, battery recycling is really crucial. When an EV battery reaches the end of its life in a car, it still has like 70 to 80% of its capacity left. Now, that's perfect for second life applications like grid energy storage for solar and wind farms. So imagine your old EV battery then also powering your house or becoming the source of power to recharge your car. Now, as the number of electric vehicles continues to rise, leading to an accelerated accumulation of used batteries, and once it's truly retired from second life duties, advanced recycling facilities can actually recover valuable materials like lithium, cobalt and nickel, reducing the need for new mining. It's moving towards a circular economy for batteries. Again, something that Kia is pioneering in. Okay, so now let's peek into the crystal ball. What next for EV batteries? The holy grail is often cited as the solid state battery. Ooh, so that sounds like something sci-fi. So what's it all about? What's the buzz? Now, instead of a liquid electrolyte, solid state batteries are obviously using a solid material. Now, this promises even higher energy density. That means longer ranges, smaller, lighter batteries, and significantly improved safety because there's no flammable liquid in it. So think about faster charging here as well. And another contender making waves is the sodium ion battery. So this is exciting because sodium is incredibly abundant. It's cheap, unlike lithium. And while current sodium ion batteries don't quite have the same amount of energy density as lithium ion, this will offer a more sustainable, potentially much lower cost option, especially when you look at smaller urban EVs or stationary storage where entry price becomes a barrier. 
All right, so from chunky lead acid blocks to the promise of solid state marvel, it's been quite a wild ride for EV batteries, hasn't it? And it's a ride that's not over yet. Now, they've not just powered cars, they've powered a movement, a movement towards cleaner air, quieter cities, and just a more sustainable future. And with every breakthrough in safety, every dip in cost, every step towards a greener life cycle, the movement gains more momentum. So the next time you see an EV glide by you nice and silent, remember the incredible journey of the battery that's under its hood, or well, rather in its floor pan, it's a testament to human ingenuity. And a spark of inspiration for the future. That is all on this episode of EVs That Inspire. See you next time.